So in this video I'm going to introduce you to Visio Shapesheet and show you the how a shape looks from behind the scenes or from a developer perspective. So first thing we want to make note of is we've got a rectangle drawn on the page here and we have the developer toolbar which I've turned on via customize the ribbon right here. We won't go into that now. If we come over to the developer toolbar you'll see that one particular button of interest in, in addition to many other developer related features is the show shape sheet button and that allows you to show shape sheets for the shape, the page, or even a document. But when you start working with the shape sheet you're actually more likely to right click on a shape and choose the topmost mouse uh, menu item which shows up when you turn on the developer toolbar. We like to call it running in developer mode but it's not like there's a lot of extra things going on. It's just access to the shape sheet and a few of these functions in the ribbon. So let's just open up the shape sheet and right away you'll see something that looks a little bit like Excel. You've got cells and rows and sections that you can resize. Think of it as a, a very structured Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that applies just to the Visio shapes. And a few things that make sense if you just look at them right away is you can see there's a width and height and angle and we can actually type in new values. So let's just type in say three inches and you can see the shape gets, get, gets wider. And if we make the shape smaller you can see the shape sheet is changing as we make changes. So you've got data behind the graphics and they're all re they're all related. Whatever you do in here is shown up, shows up in here and whatever you do in the graphical window shows up in the shape sheet. Now a few other things about the developer toolbar is you can show formulas. Where did it go? formulas and you can also show values. You can see down here there's a bunch of numbers now. Numbers with units, number unit pairs, inch for in, in for inches. And if I click formulas you can see there's some odd formulas that say width times one, width times zero, and etc. And these are actually the points of the rectangle itself. You can see as I move from point to point there's a little black square showing me in the drawing window which point on the shape that represents. So it's kind of odd to see these formulas of width times zero, width times one, but all those are is proportional formulas. If I were to change, say, this formula, and I can do that by either selecting the cell and editing the formula up here, or I can just double click in the sh in the shape itself and change it. So if we were to say width times five, uh, point five, which is half the width, we would expect this point to jump right to here. So I'll come back down here and hit enter, and sure enough, that's what happens. Now just as you can in an Excel you can refer points to each other, you can refer formulas and cells. So if I wanted to make this point in row 2 the same as the X point in row 3, I could simply say X, uh, hit the equal sign and then click on this cell here and you can see that now this has a formula referring to geometry 1 which you can see here, X3 which is there. So now I've done that and I've got a box that only fills half of the actual alignment box for the shape. So you can see as I make this bigger, those points always stay at exactly half the width. So let's, what else can we do in here? You'll notice we've got X and Y points. So this point is located at height times zero, which is zero if I were to say height point times 0.25, we would expect it to go up one-fourth of the height. And in the shape sheet, this is zero, 00 down here in the lower left corner. The width is to the right and the height is to the top. So this point up here would be width comma height if you are used to Cartesian coordinates. So let's set that back to zero where it was. And let's look at one more thing here. We could We can actually add a point in between here by saying right clicking on the on the cell and saying insert row after. Now that's off your screen there so let's do it a little bit higher. Insert row after. Let's bring the window back down and let's see what's happened. We had points, we had a square. Aha, uh -huh. now we have a point in the middle between these two points here that we didn't have before. And let's move it back to be at the full width. And you don't have to say width times one, you can just say width and there we've got it. We've started by the uh, beginnings of a pointed arrow. You can see that 
as I move that, it stretches. It's not exactly the way we would want an arrow to behave. It'd be nicer if the head always maintained the same shape instead of stretching out like that. But you can see where we're going with this. Now, a neat thing about the shape sheet is you can actually do conditional formulas like you can in Excel. So let's come down to the fill format section where we have a fill foreground and a fill background cell. These correspond to things you set when you go to the the um, fill dialog. So let's say if we picked red, what happens here? We've get all these complicated formulas. Let's see if the values look any different. RGB 25500. So that's typical computer type representations of color. But um, Visio also has some indexed colors which you can do by, let's say if you try zero, just hit zero is black, one is white, two is red, and three is green. And this is a little bit easier for just some basic demonstration. You can always use the RGB formulas. But now let's see what happens. This shape right now is approximately two and a half inches. Let's just say if. Now if we can't remember the cell name, we could say, what is it called? If width. So we can just click on it right there. And you can see up here our far formula is being built just as we would in Excel. Let's say if width is greater than four inches, then make the color red. Otherwise, make it green. I think two was red and three was green. And this is just an example of what you can do with Visio. So let's go back down to fill format, fill foreground, and you can see there's our formula. Don't pay attention to this long stuff. This is advanced stuff, but we're just looking at this right here. So stay in green, and as we pass beyond four inches, the shape turns red. And that is one of the essences of the shape sheet, the fact that you can change the look of the shape based on some graphical parameters. Uh, the color of the shape, the position of vertexes, all these things can be governed by conditional formulas. It could even be linked to shape data fields that you might put into the shape. So that's the introduction to the shape sheet, and uh, hopefully you have fun playing with it yourself.